So here's a little disclaimer before I start this video. I had a talk with the China Hi-Fi guy who is the retailer for the Junction stuff. And it was agreed that we would give away the Junction stack to my Patreons on my Patreon to support my Patreon. So in a way for them to support me. So that is something that I have to put a disclaimer on. Looking at the Junction stack today, it reminds me of when I had my Junction stack myself, uh, except it was a lower tier. And this takes me way back when I was hunting for some cheap, inexpensive Class A options. And I came across some Junction Class A amplifier and a preamplifier that was a lower model than the Junction stack here. But from my memory, I don't remember the model exactly, but from my memory, that left a very good impression on me, enough to go crazy with single-ended Class A amplifiers and so on and so forth. So it is one of those gears that I really, really um, have a foundation on in terms of where I got started. Now, I love researching gear, um, the designers behind it, the history behind it, and that was the case when I wasn't doing videos like this as well. So when I had the Junction stuff, I researched the company. And I remember that the Junction was started by two brothers. And they were really passionate about audio. And they started in a garage building these amplifiers by hand and going door to door and trying to get dealers carry them. In fact, I believe they traveled like from city to city in China, which is crazy because that's very long distance. So that is the story of Junction. Now I believe they are um, owned by a different individual or whatnot, but that's where their foundation is at. And that kind of relates to what I want to talk about in relation to the video today is that the model we have here today, the JA1 preamplifier and then the JA99C amplifier is actually one of the first designs by the Junction brothers. And so this amplifier and preamplifier combination um, has been around for about 20 or so years. So it's not a new design, and I'm sure they have improved in some ways uh, in, over the years, but it was never really said you know, how or what was changed. Um, but I have an idea of that because when I heard the stack we have here today, way back uh, when I was considering the lower model versus the upper model, I remember it being a little bit different sounding than the way it sounds today. But regardless, we'll get into the sound, but I just wanted to say that this is an amplifier and preamp combination that's really fail-proof. It's been designed, although it's out of China, it has really good uh, reliability, relatively speaking, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But overall, it's a very solid piece. The build quality is incredible in this thing. And the price you pay for the stack is right now pretty staggering. Because back then, um, the average price that you would pay for a stack like this was around $2,000 to $3,000, even more in Canada. However, now they're being offered at $1,300 brand new. And that's before shipping, so you would have to account for shipping. But in most cases, you're gonna get to have this stack for under two grand which I think is pretty fantastic. And when I say it has really good build quality, I'll give you a relative reference, Parasound. Parasound amplifiers are built very solid. Um, Hegel amplifiers are you know, plain looking, but they're very built solid as well. Name stuff, very solid as well. Well, in my opinion, Junction beats them all. In terms of its pure build quality, this thing is chunky metal. It is basically, a gigantic monster of an amplifier. And if you open it up and you look at the inside, 
you just get an immediate feeling of value. And these are not cheap capacitors. These are somewhat of the same quality as the ones using the Hegel, as far as I can tell. And you have hell a lot of them in there. Now looking at the inside of the preamplifier, the preamplifier is also quite amazing as well. Uh, the power transformer is uh, inside this casing, as you can see, and is covered. But looking at the overall design of things, this looks like a dual mono design and it's also class A as well. Now, as for the power rating of the Junction amplifier, it says that it's 80 watts into 8 ohms in class A. Now that's pretty insane and quite hard to believe. And I was talking with Sean Fowler from Zero Fidelity as well about this. And I was asking him, don't you need something bigger, more chunky, than what we have in front of us to output 80 watts in class A. And the heat should be insane. However, it wasn't exactly that. So Sean and I think that this doesn't exactly output 80 watts into class A. But however, we do get a feeling that this thing is more powerful than its actual rating of 80 watts. Um, my guess is that it outputs somewhere around 150 to 200 watts. And at some point it is class AB. And to Sean's guessing, I believe he said around 13 watts or so is class A. Now put that aside, overall the sound is incredible. And with most speakers that you have, uh, if it's efficient enough, you will be using most of the class A mode anyways. So again, class A in 80 watts is a little bit hard to believe, but I do believe this is quality enough to output some type of class A amplification, enough to drive most speakers. Now in terms of inputs and outputs, it has pretty much everything. It has balanced inputs, outputs on the preamplifier, RCA. It is very versatile and you can have basically anything. You just have to remember, this is a preamplifier and amplifier combination. So you will have to add a DAC like the Denifrips that I was using um, or another DAC of your choice. Amplifier is much the same way. It has balanced inputs, it has RCA inputs, um, it has pretty good decent binding post as well for the speakers. And we have this remote, which is metal, very solidly built. However, um, it has this issue where this back plate doesn't quite stay on the remote. So it's a little, you know, a little bit of a problem, but nothing a little tape can't solve. However, this is exactly what I mean when I say that, you know, it is good for the price and good for the performance and all that but there are times where the quality control is going to be a concern, despite the fact that you know this company has been around for very, very long. Now, if I was a customer, I can easily reach out and get a new remote if I ever wish to, or I can just tape it because functionally, there's nothing wrong with it. And I believe there is a US uh, service center in the US, but for the rest of the people out there in different parts of the world, I am not too sure how that works for you in terms of servicing. So yes, it is amazing that they do have some type of servicing in the US, even though it's made in China and the price is very low, but I am not too sure what kind of servicing you're getting. And also, you know, this is an easy fix. This is just a remote, but um, you know, the amplifier itself is built very well, but you never know what may go wrong. So you have to be, you know, keeping that in mind when you're purchasing something like this, uh, you're taking a bargain as well. And in terms of the looks, I'm a big fan of meters. I'm a sucker for meters and it is so beautiful, especially when you turn off the light at night. It is just absolutely beautiful how those meters dance to the music. Um, and just, just, just. Now in terms of sound, when I got this amplifier, I was hoping that it would be a good contender to something more expensive like the Parasound. And it does. Um, up to a certain price point of let's say the A21 plus or the A23 from Parasound. Now, like I said, the sound is entirely different from Parasound. The Parasound is more gutty, it has grip, warmth, whereas the Junction is a little bit on the opposite side of the spectrum, if you so will. 
It is very powerful. It has that very powerful solid state sound. It grabs you and it is very, very enticing in the mid range. It is a little bit more forward and it gives you excitement. It's not a boring amplifier, but it is not a neutral amplifier either. The bass is excellent and it's great, very good quality. However, it's not going to be overemphasized in any way. So if you're looking for an amplifier that will increase the bass region uh, in your speakers, this amplifier is not going to do that. But if your speakers are already capable of having that bass, then the Junction amplifier will do a great job of delivering the bass that's required for the speakers. Now, in the mid-range, like I said, back to it, the guitars, the strings are quite natural sounding, but it's also a little bit forward sounding. So if you hear the scrape of a guitar or a string instrument or a trumpet or a saxophone and you hear those sibilances, it's not going to hide any of that. It is quite faithful in that reproduction. It is a little bit more exciting. So for people that like to rock and roll, this is a great amplifier to really crank up and rock and roll, just like my intro. Now, into the high frequencies, um, again, it's not going to be a rolled off sound. It's not going to be a warm sound. It's going to be a rather extended and it's going to have a little bit of that forwardness going on. The sound stage and imaging is quite good. The ability to pinpoint instrument is quite good because this is a very quiet, very clean sounding amplifier. So for people that like that kind of um, great separation, great imaging, great sound stage, big sound that you would expect from a big amplifier like this, this has that kind of muscle and it has that kind of grip and texture and authority in a solid state amplifier, just like big amplifiers like Paris Sound and so on and so forth. It doesn't sound lean in my opinion, it's rather a different presentation. It is a muscular sound, but it's not a boring or laid back kind of sound. So for those of you that are prone to brightness, so if you're more prone to bright sound, you don't like any type of bright sound, then this is a hard pass because this amplifier and preamplifier combination can get a tad bright at times with certain tracks. Now the sound I described here is with the amplifier and preamplifier combination. If you were to get just the amplifier and remove the preamplifier from the equation, then it gets a little bit easier to manipulate the sound to more of your liking if you are not about a little bit of that brightness and forwardness in the mid range and the high frequency. So I tried the amplifier with different preamplifiers like the Kinky Studio preamplifier, the P7, and I also tried the new so sound artist uh, tube preamplifier, and I also tried it with the pre out on the Hegel, I also tried it with the Modrite LS100 two preamplifier that I have on hand. So I tried multiple different preamplifiers and my conclusion is that it changes with different preamplifiers. So for example, if you were to add a two preamplifier, the mid range and the high frequency can be a little bit more tamed, can become a little bit more silky and smooth. And so the preamplifier plays a pretty good role in determining what you get out of the amplifier at the end of the day. Now that does not mean that just by changing the preamplifier, the inherent characteristic of the amplifier changes. Yes, you can tame the mid range and the high frequency a little bit, but you're not going to change the overall characteristic of the amplifier where you make this amplifier into a warm, you know, tube sounding like amplifier. That's just not going to happen. So if you are okay with certain brightness, but you want a little bit more smoothness, then it's an option to go with a different preamplifier. But if you're looking to get this preamplifier or amplifier because it's just so darn good looking, but it's not your sound, and you're hoping to get a preamplifier to fix that problem, that's just not going to work. So make sure to not fall into that kind of trap and misunderstanding. So thank you for watching, and I think that's pretty much it for this review. Make sure to subscribe and click that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next one.